All right, now let's talk about where the data can be hosted. Really three options. If your business, you can go with an MSP, managed services provider. You can go with a hyperscaler, or you can go with a managed cloud services provider. And we're gonna talk about all three of those now. Let's take a business with employees. Now they have a few options. They can go with uh, a managed services provider, MSP. Now this MSP can do DAS one of two ways. They can have their own data center, right? Uh, could be in their mother's basement, could be in a very good data center. Um, you don't know. You have to check, you have to review it, maybe even visit it. Um, the MSP, however, can also host in, you know, an AWS or an Azure. Giant data centers all over the world. They can put your information there as well. Or you can go with a uh, managed cloud services provider uh, that also has data centers all over the world, hopefully, at least all over the country. These guys were born in the cloud. These guys made the transition to the cloud. We're not sure how recently they've done that, what kind of expertise they have. So more pros and cons of this. So uh, an MSP uses his, uh, his own data center. Uh, you don't know what kind of data center that is. Um, how redundant is it? Is it one data center? Is it connected to other data centers, et cetera? Now, the AWS and the Azure play is interesting, right? So the downside to AWS and Azure is that, one, this MSP has to be an expert on those technologies, as well as VDI, a very hard combination there, right? You can have one or the other. It takes a long time to get to learn these platforms. Now, the real thing you got to look out for is there's not a lot of margin for the MSP in this business because they're charged for storage and they're only able to mark up a small, or they only get a small markup on this storage. Uh, so there's really not a lot of money in it for them. How are they going to stay in the game long term if they don't have their own data center? These guys aren't making it real lucrative for these guys, they're making it, they're trying to make it cost effective for these guys, which is also questionable. So uh, that's also where the managed cloud services provider comes in. Um, they have their own infrastructure built. Um, there's overhead, how they manage their overhead. There's much more um, ability to create a business and to make a long-term business from this. They're not getting squeezed by these guys. The costs are very similar, more margin here than there is here for these guys. One more thing that you want to look at with, with these MSPs, they must have multiple data centers um, and there must be, um, and they must have some type of a, of a backup option or a disaster recovery option that's not located in the same data center or in that business. Uh, so, it's just, so you need to have multiple data centers. Also, uh, we're going to talk about latency a little bit later, uh, but the MSP needs to have data centers close to or in the same part of the country as this business. So, for instance, uh, if the business is located in Chicago, this is the United States, not a horse, and they also have a business here and a business here, that's California, um, and, the, and the MSP is located here, that DAS is going to work really well for this location. It's not going to work as well for this location or this location because that data has to travel a long ways. You want to make sure that they have data centers close to those locations, at least in the same half of the United States at a minimum, ideally east, west, and central. The final thing that you want to make sure you're getting from an MSP is that they can provide an SLA, a service level agreement for this business. So if their DAS goes down, if the network goes down, they're going to refund this company money for that time that it goes down. Um, you know, so, and they are relying on AWS and Azure, right, for, for their agreement. They don't control their own infrastructure. So really, many of these guys don't provide an SLA, and when they do, it's not a very good one, meaning there's not a lot on the line for them if your network goes down and you can't use your machines. 
So those are the pros and cons of using an MSP versus a managed cloud services provider versus going into a hyperscaler like Azure or AWS.